Hi, good morning. Thank you, everyone, for coming out, uh, and thank you to Arthrex for putting on these talks. Uh, my name is David Macias, and I'm going to talk today about plantar plate repair using the Arthrex CPR system. Hopefully, at the end of this talk, I can show uh, you that can be beneficial both to you and to your patients. And so, what is a crossover toe? I think at this point, we understand that uh, the main stabilizer of the lesser MTP joints is the plantar plate, and numerous anatomic studies have shown that. And when you lose that stability, you can get pain, swelling, and dysfunction, loss of uh, toe purchase into the ground, and you can fail the tissue pullout test as you see this patient uh, failing it here. And so why is this important? Well, uh, if we look on the high end, estimates of prevalence of lesser toe uh, deformity and instability are up to 20%. And so if we look at the U.S., that'd be like saying uh, that the entire populations of California and Texas, the two most populous states in the nation, have uh, lesser toe uh, instability and deformity. And so this is a lot of patients. And so you may not see a lot of forefoot in your clinic personally, but uh, these patients are seeing you and they need our help to get better. Well, how is this treated traditionally? Traditionally, it was treated with non-anatomic reconstructions. And so you could do a wild osteotomy, um, but that uh, can lead to the classic floating toe in 30 to 50%. It also can lead to transfer uh, metatarsalgia, just kind of kicking the can down the road. It's been treated with a flexor tick, sensor tendon transfer traditionally as well. But again, this is a non-anatomic reconstruction and doesn't directly address the pathology of the plantar plate tear. And so what does the literature say about these non-anatomic reconstructions? Well, this is a paper out of the UK in 2012. And the authors looked at 154 toes, uh, 55 were treated operatively with a combination of osteotomies and flexor to extensor tendon transfers, and 99 treated with conservative measures. And what they found was that there were no statistically significant differences in terms of satisfaction, AOFAS scores, and AOFAS pain. And they actually just recommended, just don't operate on these people, just don't treat them. Similarly, in 2005, this article by Mark Myerson and Hong Jung uh, looked at 64 uh, second toes that were treated with flexor to extensor tendon transfer. And what they found was that almost 40% had residual dorsal flexion. About a third had some residual coronal plane deformity, and about a third either worsened morphologically or didn't get better. And they found that achieving normal alignment was actually quite difficult, and any functional improvements they had were mainly related to pain relief, but not to restoration of function. And so why did these things fail? Well, much as we've moved away from non-anatomic uh, reconstructions at the lateral ankle uh, to direct repair using brosom ghoul technique to directly address the pathology, we've moved away from non-anatomic uh, reconstructions of the lesser MTP joints uh, to direct repair uh, using the CPR system so that we're again directly addressing the pathology. And this has been supported in the literature. And this is the largest study that I'm aware of looking at plantar plate repair. And we looked at 138 toes that were treated with the CPR system. And what we found was that at one year follow-up, we had a statistically significant improvement in AOFAS scores, VAS pain, and our clinical drawer. Uh, we also had statistically significant improvement in toe contact and in patients that were able to pass the tissue paper pullout test. And our patient satisfaction was rated as uh, good to excellent and 80%. Now, a couple things to know about this study. One, it took the entire experience of the senior author into account, and there is definitely a learning curve for this procedure. The second thing to know is that uh, we know that a lot of patients were getting stiff, and so towards the end of this procedure, we started to move to an accelerated rehabilitation protocol, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but I think if you repeated this study today, you would actually get even better results in these. Similarly, uh, long-term follow-up has shown good results as well. And this is average two-year follow-up in 66 patients that were treated with this algorithm that you see to the left. And plantar plate repair had statistically significant improvement across all the metrics that they measured. But something that was very interesting with this study was that grade one tears were treated with a wild osteotomy alone uh, and radiofrequency shrinkage. They did not have a direct plantar plate repair. But those actually did worse in terms of toe purchase ground touch and stability when compared to the grade two tears that were treated with a direct repair, showing us that you know we need to treat these tears even when they're low-grade tears in order to improve their outcomes. And those findings were echoed in this paper in 2020 by Lowell Wall Jr. and his group, where they looked at the lesser toe instability in 86 patients. And the authors made an intraoperative decision to treat with a while osteotomy alone or a while with a CPR repair. And what they found was that those treated with a while and a CPR repair had a statistically significant improvement in terms of pain and ankle and foot related quality of life measures when compared to the while osteotomy alone. Now this is despite the fact that those treated with the while alone had a median grade one tear and those treated with the while and CPR had a median grade three tear. Again, showing us that even low grade tears need to be treated aggressively in order to get good results.
And so in my practice, this is my treatment algorithm, and it's very straightforward. If they have a painful drawer, we try non-operative therapies. If they fail that, then we discuss a plantar plate repair. If they improve, we can continue with conservative care, but if at any point they start to fail that, then we again discuss plantar plate repair. This is part of my post-operative protocol, and I think this is really crucial to getting good results. As I said before, if you don't get these patients moving quickly, they get stiff, and they really don't like that. And so I get all of my patients moving actively and passively on their own starting on post-operative day one. And at three weeks, all of my patients are going to formal physical therapy in order to get as much motion to that joint. Much as we start moving our Achilles as fast as we can and our lateral ankle ligaments, uh, we want to start moving these toes as well. Okay. And so in my practice, I've uh, performed the CPR so in over 50 patients, here. about 64 it's toes. Just been, and I've tried off. to collect these, so the um, these metrics at pre-op three months, six totally months, and 12 months. And so the Viper uh, here, this is unpublished um, data, but uh, small... with at least three-month follow-up, I found an almost 23-point improvement in uh, FAM scores, uh, almost four-point improvement in VAS pain scores. And I think... Uh, okay. Partly because of the stability that I get with the CPR repair, coupled with the um, accelerated rehabilitation protocol, a 60% improvement in my patients that passed the tissue paper pullout test. And so here's one case. This is a 52-year-old uh, pharmacist who had been training for a half marathon, and she had developed forefoot pain, and she was injected multiple times by an outside provider. While she was actually running the half marathon, she felt a pop in her foot and had a lot of pain and she came to my clinic like this and you can see she's totally dislocated at the second MTP joint, almost dislocated at the third and the fourth was grossly unstable. And so she underwent a direct repair using the CPR system and at three months postoperatively, you can see her joints are nicely reduced. She had restored her toe purchase to the ground and she was able to get back to jogging. And so in conclusion, plantar plate tears affect a large percentage of patients and the treatment of choice is direct repair using the CPR system. There is a learning curve to this, uh, but it is worth it for our patients. And much like there's a learning curve for MIS, there's a learning curve to this, but I think it's really worth it in order to get better results. When you're doing plantar plate repairs, make sure that you're trained on all the options. The CPR system has the Scorpion as well as the Pigtail Passer. The Viper is excellent for small spaces or if you don't want to do a wild osteotomy, but have a backup plan as well, the forefoot internal brace if the tissue is just not of good quality. And make sure that you have aggressive post-operative rehabilitation protocols because I do believe that those are essential for good outcomes. Thank you.